My name is Gary and I am a bit of a Scrooge. Uh, I still have my confirmation and communion money. When I die, I hope that they put all the money they collect at the Mass into my coffin. Please don't allow anyone to give money to Cree or any of those charities. Just put it in my coffin with me. When I was able to speak for the first time, I went up to my mother and I asked her for my Christian money and the Christian presents. It was all mine. So I have a big problem with the book of Christmas Carol and Scrooge and Dickens's attempt to get rid of Scrooges and tell us all to live and give and give and give away everything to other people. Uh, for one thing, in the book, Scrooge approaches his front door and the doorknob turns into a ghost. Dickens is trying to scare the shite scared the bejesus out of a 70 year old man. This man lives in Victorian Britain. He's survived. Most people die at 40. Yet Dickens wants the ghost to scare the man into his grave without even changing him. And he sends Marley full of chains and his jaw dropping off to this old frail man. What kind of cruel logic is that? We don't want to be doing that. And another thing, after the ghosts are finished with him, Ebenezer helps the Cratchit family, and especially Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim lives in a world where they still use leeches. So if Scrooge helps Tiny Tim, they're going to bleed Tim. They're going to cut him open. There's no antibiotics. He'll probably die on the operating table. He might live another 10 or 15 years. Let's be honest, it's survival of the fittest in Victorian Britain. And the poor guy, he'll probably live a little bit longer and he'll eventually get syphilis on the streets. The money that was given to the Cratchits, Tim is going to spend it on prostitutes and die of syphilis. He'll go completely insane. And all the happy songs he was singing as a kid will turn into nightmares. Don't do that to the child. It's survival of the fittest. He needs to go. The ghosts as well, they pick on him. The middleman, a man who lives down a side street in a shabby, rotten, run-down house. Why don't these ghosts that are all powerful go to Queen Victoria, go to the top, scare the shy off her, scare the knickers off her? No, no, scare her out of India, scare her out of Ireland. She's a Scrooge. She's the real Scrooge. No, but Dickens picks on the middleman. What's that telling you? The book gets geared towards who? The middleman. The man making a wage. Nah, nah, nah. There's just so many faults with that book. It's ridiculous. We need Scrooges. Scrooge was one of the first environmentalists in a book. I bet you didn't know that. Yeah, him and Bob Cratchit in the office at the start. And what does he not allow Bob to do? Burn coal. He says, don't be burning that coal. We'll stay cold. He's suffering himself along with Cratchit. He's not allowing coal smoke to go up into the sky. The same coal smoke that's choking little tiny Tim. So he's a good man. Scrooge, through his Scrooginess, is actually stopping pollution. You see, Dickens has no logic. Dickens is an idiot. He wants Bob Cratchit, which he does at the end, to burn extra coal, thereby choking his own kids in the street coal dust everywhere, killing thousands. Huh? Where's the logic in that? And another thing, if there were no Scrooges in the world, what about Bob Geldof? What about Bono? We'd have nothing to talk about. With no Scrooges. We need to be able to talk. We vent as a nation about Bono and all the millions he has squirreled away in Dutch bank accounts and offshore accounts. That's what gets us through the day. Oh, stop. Dickens. Never again. I'm never reading Dickens again. Imagine a world without Bono's and Bob Geldof's.